So um, I turned off my la my uh, tablet by accident. So uh, I guess this this video is going to be where we actually start uh, the class. So thirteen point one um, vectors in the plane. So uh, we're going to introduce vectors um, in the plane. 13.2 uh, is going to be vectors in space. Uh, we're going to just talk about the basics of vectors. Um, perhaps uh, some of you have seen a lot of this material. Uh, it's just going to be the basics, but we're going to emphasize um, some of the, the stuff we'll be seeing uh, over and over uh, in this class. All right, uh, so first thing I want to say is um, the plane. So when we say the plane, we mean x, y. That's the plane, um, as opposed to just the line. Um, so this is the plane. Um, here's just the line, right? Where you're just talking about one number. And then um, we'll be talking about space in 13.2. Okay, um, sometimes this terminology sounds a little weird, uh, especially if we, we're working with, um, we are gonna be working with planes, actual planes, um, in the, not, not airplanes, but um, planes like that um, in space in the future. So uh, another bit of terminology that maybe I'll, I'll try to use um, to avoid this confusion is the plane I'm often gonna call this R2. All right, um, R2, uh, R is for real numbers. Uh, two is because we have two variables or two dimensions, X and Y, all right? So the line would be called, um, generally it would just be called R um, because there's only one. It would be R to the R1, but um, of course we would just drop the one. And um, space, we would call it R3 because we've got three, uh, three dimensions or three variables, all right? So sometimes I'll say space, um, sometimes I'll say R3, sometimes I'll say the plane, um, and sometimes I'll say R2, all right? Okay, um, purely terminology, uh, no math content right there. Okay, let's see, vectors. So what is a vector? A vector is two things, length, and direction. All right. Um, if you if you have uh, these two bits of information, then you have a vector. All right. And a vector is no more than these two bits of information. Okay. Um, in terms of pictures, there's a vector. All right. It this arrow um, has a length. Right. Right there. That's its length. And um, it has a direction. It's pointing uh, kind of northeast, roughly. Okay, um, so that's a vector. Uh, here's another vector, right there. Here's another vector, right there. Okay. Um, only length and direction. So one thing to emphasize is that if I have another vector, let's say right here that has the same length as my original vector over here, right? So these two guys have the same length and they're pointing in exactly the same direction, then these two vectors are the same, all right? So these two vectors here are equal, all right? Um, so the location of a vector doesn't matter, all right? In terms of, in terms of just talking about that vector, okay? So these two, these two vectors right here are the same. All right, this vector right here and uh, this vector right here, they're the same, okay? Um, we're gonna be exploiting this quite a bit, uh, even today, um, in, to help us kind of understand the arithmetic of vectors. And uh, also to uh, um, do uh, kind of algebraic um, computations with, uh, or to define even algebraic um, uh, computations with vectors. Okay, so again, uh, most importantly, only length and direction. 
All right, so I can move a vector around wherever I like, um, as long as I don't change its length and direction, it's the same vector. Okay, um, notation. V with an arrow, all right? Um, usually, uh, we try to restrict ourselves to lowercase letters, V, U, W, something like that. We always put the little arrow on top to indicate that the quantity that we're working with is a uh, vector as opposed to a uh, scalar. Uh, and by scalar, I mean a number, all right? Um, so because we're in multivariable setting, in the multivariable setting, um, we will be working with a lot with uh, just regular numbers. We will be working a lot with uh, vectors. We'll be working a lot with points, like one comma, two comma, three as a point um, in space. Um, so we always want to be very clear uh, when we're computing things as to what it is that we're computing, right? Are we working with a vector? Are we working with just a regular number? In which case we don't have the arrow, of course, maybe we call it C, right? Are we working with um, a point, one comma two or something like that? Um, always make it clear. So always put the little arrow on top of your uh, vectors. Uh, if you are reading the book, um, the book doesn't do this because the book bold faces all their vectors. Okay, well, obviously we can't bold face um, when we write stuff, so uh, this is this is the uh, the notation that we use. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, uh, I already said uh, every vector is um, a length and a direction. Here's our first lie of the uh, class. Uh, there's one exception. Um, that's the zero vector. So again, um, zero vector. Always put the arrow on top when you're talking about zero as a vector um, because there's a huge difference between zero as a number and zero as a vector. Um, they represent completely two different concepts. So always, always put the arrow. Uh, what's a zero vector? It's a vector with zero length, right? So this is an exception to the length plus direction business because um, if you have zero length, there's no such thing as direction, right? Every other vector that we've drawn, right? Uh, it has a length, and then if it has a length, then there's going to be um, an arrow uh, pointing to this direction. But if you have zero length, right, that's all you got. So um, this zero vector is an exception to the length, is the only exception to the length plus direction uh, business. And again, usually we just um, represent a zero vector just with a, with a dot like that. Okay, we need the zero vector. Um, it, sound, it feels kind of silly to have such thing as a zero vector in a way, but we need it because our next topic is going to be um, algebra. And of course, if you're doing algebra, you need, um, you need the concept of zero. Okay, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do algebra geometrically. And then um, we'll have, a, after this, we'll do a, a second, um, second uh, pass-through. Uh, where we'll do it um, algebra, uh, arithmetically, where we can actually do computations. Okay, um, what I mean geometrically is by pictures, essentially. Okay, so how, um, when I say algebra, what I mean is we want to talk about the addition of vectors, uh, first of all. Um, how do we do this? So, pretty easy when you have pictures. Um, here's a vector v. Here's another vector w. What is v plus w? Um, by definition, what we do is, uh, there, there's a couple ways of doing this. Um, the first way I'm gonna present is we're gonna take w, we're gonna move it so that w and, um, uh, let me do it this way. Uh, we're gonna move it so that w, uh, the tail of w coincides with the, uh, the head of v. All right, so again, uh, one of the really important point, when we move a vector, as long as we keep the length and the direction the same, um, it's the same vector. So I can legally do this. This is still w. Okay, all I've done is move w to here. Okay, um, what is v plus w? v plus w is this vector right there. Okay, so I start at v. Um, I go from the tail of v to the head of v, and then I go from the tail of w, from the same location, to the head of w. That's w plus, uh, sorry, v plus w, okay? Um, this is one way to uh, 
to define um, the addition of, of two vectors. Um, very, very straightforward, very, very simple, as long as you have pictures of your vectors. Okay, um, one thing to notice, uh, V plus W is the same as W plus V. Um, so V plus W, same as W plus V, because if I did the same thing starting with W, then I would be doing, I'm, I'm doing the same two, uh, same two vectors here, V and W. Uh, w looks something like that, right? Uh, v looks um, something like that. And so W plus V is gonna be like that, and you can see that they're, they're gonna be the same vectors, all right? Okay, this is great because we always expect that addition um, satisfies such a property, right? Three plus five is the same as five plus three. So um, with vectors, same idea. Okay, if you're not convinced by my two separate pictures, um, I can do both pictures at the same time, and that'll lead us to our second um, point of view for adding of uh, addition of vectors. So V and W like this. Um, so that gives me, uh, this, this picture here would give me V plus W. W plus V, I would do W first, and then V. That picture would give me W plus V, and you can see that this guy here, which is V plus W, and W plus V, oops, V, same thing, okay? Uh, why are they the same? Because this guy here forms a parallelogram, right? This guy, uh, this V vector here is parallel to this vector here, and they're the same length. This W vector is parallel to that W vector, and the same length. So we have a parallelogram, and the diagonal is gonna be the same, uh, V plus W and W plus V. So this kind of leads us to a, a, a different point of view for adding vectors. It's literally the same idea, but just a, a slightly different point of view, where if you have two vectors and you wanna add them, you can, instead of putting one after the other, um, like we did up here, right? Um, in this case, uh, V after W gives me W plus V. Um, instead of doing that, we can put the two vectors together with the same tail, like this. And then uh, what the, uh, the sum of the two vectors would be is you fill in the parallelogram, and then that would be the sum. All right. Um, both points of views are useful um, in, in their own different situations. Um, oftentimes, uh, depending on, on what you're using the vectors for, uh, sometimes you want to think about the one after the other picture. Sometimes you want to think about um, the vector that's in between um, V and W uh, picture. So this second picture, for example, if you've got um, two forces, right? V is a force, W is a force, right? Um, pushing, let's say, um, in this setting, these forces are pushing a particle. This is my particle right there. Um, each of these forces push the particle in, uh, in different directions and with different um, strength, right? So V is pushing that direction, um, W is pushing this direction, and uh, looks like in, in the picture I've drawn, W is pushing pretty hard, and V is not pushing as hard, okay? That's determined by the length. So um, in this kind of setting, you probably want to um, use the uh, kind of this version, the second version of addition, because you can, it's, easy to understand that when you have two forces pushing on the same object, right, like this, then the actual force, the actual um, force that the object feels is going to be V plus W, all right? And you can see it's, it's in between the two forces. So that, that makes a lot of sense uh, when, you, when you use this point of view. Whereas the other point of view um, perhaps makes sense when you're talking about maybe motion, right? Um, you're thinking about V as moving, right? You're moving from here to here and then you're moving from there to there, right? V plus W would be your overall motion um, from the start to the end of your trip, okay? All right, so we'll be using both either of these, um, both of these uh, uh, methods for um, thinking about geometric uh, uh, addition of vectors interchangeably. Okay, by the way, that was a nice uh, example of why we care about vectors, um, physics, right, forces. Vectors represent forces, 
right? How hard you're pushing, um, which direction you're pushing. Uh, the other application, the other major application that we'll often refer to in this class, there's an infinite number of applications, but the other one we'll offer, often refer to is uh, velocity. So vectors can represent velocity. Um, I'm moving in this direction, and the length of the vector is how fast I'm moving. All right, so this is my speed, and um, this is my direction of motion. All right. Um, so that's the, the velocity point of view. And let me, just for completeness, let me, let me put the force one. Oftentimes we'll call force, capital F. Uh, this would be the magnitude of the force, strength of force, let me call it that. That's not technical notation, so let me put that in quotes. And then this is, a, again, direction of force. So which direction that force is acting, which direction that force is pushing um, or pulling something. Okay, so those are kind of uh, our major, at least real-world uh, applications of, um, of vectors or what, where we might see vectors. Okay, um, so that was the first thing, um, addition. Uh, let's see, this was the section we called it algebra. And um, let's talk about another aspect of algebra, which is, in this case, going to be called scalar multiplication. Okay, um, so this is going to be multiplication, so multiplication, as you expect, uh, but not multiplication of two vectors. It's going to be multiplication of a scalar with a vector. And again, scalar just means a number as opposed to a vector, all right? So something, um, again, in terms of the more mathematical notation, uh, something in R, right? It's just a number as opposed to a vector. Okay, so scalar multiplication is we're multiplying a number to a vector. So oftentimes we'll call scalars something like c, and usually we'll use lowercase for scalars, um, c times v. All right, so that's the kind of stuff that, uh, that's what we want to define right now, scalar multiplication. So again, I, we must emphasize, I must emphasize, this is uh, not the multiplication of two vectors. 13.3 um, is going to be kind of about the multiplication of vectors. 13.4 uh, is going to be kind of about the multiplication of vectors. Both of those will be, in their own ways, unsatisfactory versions of multiplications of vectors, but there is no, in a way, satisfactory version um, of multiplication of two vectors. Uh, what I mean by satisfactory is kind of like um, multiplication that feels like the multiplication that we've always done with numbers. All right. There's always there's for both of those versions of multiplication. There's some complications. Okay, but for today, uh, multiplication only of a scalar with a vector, a number with a vector. So, for example, um, two times v. All right. Uh, what is this again? In terms of the picture, super simple. Here's v. Two times v just means you take the same vector, and you stretch its length by two times. All right. So one. 2, this is 2 times v, all right? So the concept is, is very, very simple. Um, you're just stretching. Scalar multiplication just stretches or, sh or shrinks, depending on um, how big your factor is, uh, your vector. So let's see. 1 half v uh, would be something like this, all right? So it would be half the length of v. So let me, again, draw v right next to it. All right, this was my v. 1 half v is, is a vector, same direction, um, but half the length. Okay, um, let's see, another interesting thing, um, negative number. What happens if you multiply a negative number to a vector? Um, so here's v again. Uh, minus one times v is gonna be the same vector as v, same length as v, except the opposite direction, direct opposite direction. So this is minus one times v, okay? All right, again, same length. So scalar multiplication um, is relatively simple. Um, if I want to do minus 2 times v, that would be opposite direction, twice the length. All right. Okay. Um, 
This, uh, this guy right there, minus one times V, is kind of a pain to write. So normally we write it as minus V, all right? Small notational thing, but uh, of course it'd be a pain if we always had to write minus one with parentheses times V all the time. Okay, um, that's uh, scalar uh, multiplication. Uh, oh, uh, one more thing is zero times V is the zero vector, okay? Um, because essentially, again, if you think about it in terms of scaling the vector, um, you're scaling the length by zero, and so your new length should be zero, and so now you should be the zero vector, okay? All right. Um, one thing you'll notice is that I haven't talked about subtraction. And I haven't talked about div um, division, right? I, I didn't say scalar division. I said scalar multiplication. And I didn't say addition. Uh, I didn't say subtraction. I said um, addition. Well, uh, the deal is these two guys don't exist in math. Uh, at least that's probably the right way to think of, of mathematics. Um, subtraction doesn't exist, and division doesn't exist. Um, what is subtraction? Subtraction is a combination. In, in, in terms of um, uh, this vector setting, subtraction is just going to be um, a combination of addition and scalar multiplication. So V minus W uh, is v is actually v plus negative w like that all right and again negative w is minus one times w so i can define subtraction in terms of the two guys i've already defined addition and scalar multiplication all right so in a way that's why i said subtraction doesn't exist um subtraction is just a shorthand for saying add uh v to minus one times W, okay? All right, so we don't need to define subtraction. It's uh, automatically defined once we have the, the, the two concepts we've already talked about. Um, but of course, uh, we're, used to, we're used to working with subtraction, so obviously we do use the notation V minus W. And uh, if you want, you can always, uh, you can figure out a, a, a graphical procedure to subtract. Uh, let's actually do that. So. If this is V, and let's say that's W, right? What would V minus W be? Uh, it's V plus negative W. So first, let me draw negative W. That's negative W, right? Minus one times W. And so now I add them. So V plus negative W. That's going to be V minus W. Okay? And I think maybe that's a, a, a very good way to to actually do the, the subtraction procedure of vectors so that you don't have to memorize another way to, to um, do the arithmetic, right? Just if you know how to do um, addition graphically or geometrically, then you know how to do subtraction geometrically, okay? Um, again, you can think up uh, uh, your own way of, of doing the subtraction in terms of a shorthand so you don't have to do kind of two steps. Uh, maybe it's a nice exercise actually to, to see if um, you're comfortable uh, working with vectors. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, let me... Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I, I want to talk about division as well. So there is no division. We talked about scalar multiplication, um, two times v, right? Uh, one third times v, no problem. But what about v over five? No such thing, right? Or at least technically. v over five is actually one fifth times v, okay? And again, we know scalar multiplication. Um, that means take the vector v and uh, shrink it by, five, um, by a factor of five. All right. So obviously, again, just like with subtraction, we'll use this notation quite a bit. But it, technically, in terms of the mathematics, division is not defined. Um, only multiplication is defined. And it's not necessary to define division. All right. Um, in a way, subtraction 
right? There's no problem with subtraction. Subtraction, everything is cool, right? Uh, everything works um, perfectly. But division actually, uh, the fact that I say division doesn't exist actually makes more sense in that division causes trouble, right? Because there's always, right, um, think, thinking back um, just to arithmetic, right, there's always this idea of why can't I divide by zero, right? Um, that's because there is no such thing as division, roughly. Um, I guess this is a video lecture, so let me just do an aside. Um, if you don't want to hear this, you can just skip, uh, I don't know, 20 seconds or whatever forward. Um, but let me, let me talk about why uh, 5 over 0 doesn't work. And um, uh, hopefully maybe that convinces you that division is not a concept that you should actually take. Um, I wanted to say take seriously, but not a concept that, um, that actually sh in a way should exist. Um, so why doesn't 5 over 0 uh, exist? Well, um, what is division? What is 5 over 3? The proper way to think of 5 over 3 is it's actually um, 3 to the minus 1 times 5, right? So this is the correct way to think of 5 over 3, all right? And maybe, you know, by this point um, in your math career, you can, you know, if you're in first grade, 5 over 3, you know, no problem. Um, but now in your math career, perhaps you should be, uh, in terms of technical terms, thinking of 5 over 3 as 3 to the minus 1 times 5, um, because everything on this right-hand side is perfectly uh, legal. Uh, what I mean by that is multiplication is always legal, all right? 3 to the minus 1, what is that? 3 to the minus 1 is the number, this is the definition of 3 to the minus 1, that when multiplied to 3, gives you 1. All right, that's the definition of 3 to the minus 1. All right, that's the proper definition of 3 to the minus 1. Um, so it's the number that when you multiply it to 3, gives you 1, right? So 7 to the minus 1 is the number that when you multiply it to 7, gives you 1. Okay. Um, now, why does 5 over 0 not exist? 5 over 0 doesn't exist because 5 over 0 should be Technically, using kind of our new uh, new point of view uh, towards uh, multiplication division, this should be 0 to the minus 1 times 5, all right? But what's 0 to the minus 1? Um, according to this definition that I'm talking about here, 0 to the minus 1 should be the thing that, when you multiply it to 0, gives you 1, right? But what thing times 0 is equal to 1? Nothing, right? Nothing multiplied to 0 gives you 1, because anything multiplied to 0 gives you 0. So 0 to the minus 1 does not exist. Um, I've been saying 0 to the minus 1, but technically, mathematically, you, you should probably say something like the multiplicative inverse of 0, or the multiplicative inverse of 7, and so on. But again, this is not, this is not a um, advanced math class, or not a super advanced math class. So. Uh, I'm just going to say 0 to the minus 1. In any case, 0 to the minus 1 does not exist, and so 5 over 0 does not exist. All right? So you, that's that's the actual reason why you can't divide by 0. Um, if you want to learn more about this, um, one thing you can do is become a math major and take uh, abstract algebra class. Where um, you'll discuss addition... Uh, multiplication very abstractly, uh, where you're not necessarily working with numbers, and um, because it's so abstract and general, it leads to infinite amount of applications. Um, number theory comes from that, and um, how do we? Why do we care about number theory? Whenever you log into your bank account, encryption that comes from number theory at least the way we do encryption um, in the modern times. Okay, um, so that was a, a bit of an aside, but actually um, you'll, you'll see what we just talked about um, in linear algebra. Probably, very likely, um, your next uh, calculus um, sequence class. Uh, because in linear algebra, you'll be working with matrices, and um, 
in certain circumstances, there's such thing as the um, inverse of a matrix, uh, a to the minus one, just like um, seven to the minus one over up here. Um, and the deal is a to the minus one is by definition, the thing that when you multiply to a gives you the identity matrix. And the identity matrix plays the role of one. All right. Now the deal is that um, you will never in a linear algebra class ever write something like this, A over B. Um, because division literally, really, really does not exist in linear algebra. Okay. Um, so that's it for our side. Uh, let's, um, let's get back to our two guys. Okay, uh, let me write down some properties. So uh, these properties are all going to be um, what we expect. Um, so these properties are going to be properties uh, of addition, properties of scalar multiplication, uh, properties of the interaction between addition and scalar multiplication, and they're all going to be what we expect. So in a way, this is going to be kind of lame. So I'm going to just write them all down very quickly and say a few words about them. But um, it's good to write them down just because uh, whenever you do define a new concept of uh, addition or new concept of multiplication, right, you want to make sure that uh, your new addition or multiplication or whatever it is um, satisfies the properties that you're kind of used to um, when you talk about the words multiplication and addition. Um, also, I want to write them down because uh, one of our multiplications, the cross product in 13.4, does not satisfy all the properties um, that we expect. And so obviously we want to contrast um, the situations. Okay, um, let's see. The first property is that u plus v plus w, parentheses like this, is equal to u plus v plus w, parentheses like this. All right. Um, so what does this mean? Uh, this means that if I add u plus v first, and then I add the result to w, that's the same as adding v plus w first, and then adding the result to, v, to u. All right. So this is kind of uh, about ordering um, in a way. Uh, it's called the associative law or let's call it associativity, associativity of addition. And every decent concept of addition um, will satisfy associativity, right? Um, you don't want it to matter what order you do these two uh, this kind of computation, okay? Uh, why is this true? If you look at our picture, um, definition of addition, uh, and you draw a picture of u, v, and w, you can convince yourself that this works. Um, I'm not going to do it. Again, we're not going to dwell too much on, um, on these properties. Okay, next. u plus 0 is equal to u. Uh, very unexciting. Um, but Again, um, technically, in terms of mathematics, we should always write down uh, these kind of properties. And of course, 0 plus u is, is u. These two, of course, go together. OK. Um, every vector has an opposite. That looks weird. Vector. Um, that when you add it, uh, added to it, gives you zero. All right. So um, this again, a lot of words, but it's actually not saying much. It says that whenever you have a vector, there's an opposite vector. That when you add the two, you get zero. Right. V plus this guy. Uh, in terms of our definition of adding, our, our first definition, right? You go from here to here, and then you come back. You end up with just a zero vector, all right? So every vector has um, kind of this complementary guy that when you add to it, it gives you zero. And again, this is, in a way, 
um, not surprising because we already know this is what we've we've been calling negative v. All right. Okay. Um, one reason why I wanted to write these down is that if you do take if you do become a math major, uh, or maybe even if you're not a math major and you you want to take a fun class and you take abstract algebra, these are the properties um, that you study. Uh, and again, you're studying them with abstract things, not just not necessarily vectors, not necessarily numbers, um, just abstract objects. And again, because it's so um, general, it can be applied to many, many different situations. Uh, in fact, uh, they can. Uh, there's people who use uh, abstract algebra to study um, modern music uh, theory, or uh, that sounded weird. Uh, theory of uh, modern atonal music. Okay, anyway, um, so again, uh, nothing too exciting so far. Uh, this next one is u plus v equals v plus u. We've already talked about this one. Um, these are the guys that are, these are the um, properties that relate to addition. Uh, the ones that relate to scalar multiplication are going to be Similar, a times c v is equal to a times c v, all right? Um, so this is kind of like associativity uh, in a way, uh, our first property up here, right? Uh, you can do u plus v first and then you add to w, or you can do v plus u uh, first and then add it to u. Well, down here, you can do, uh, in terms of scalar multiplication, you can multiply a and c first and then do the scalar multiplication or you can do scalar multiplication first and then do another scalar multiplication, all right? So even though these two look kind of silly and ridiculous, um, the multiplications here are actually different, right? Um, this multiplication right there is multiplication of numbers. Right? And this multiplication here is, oh, I should have written this multiplication here is scalar multiplication, right? So this thing here is grade school math, and this thing right there is multivariable calculus, all right? So um, things are not perhaps as ridiculously simple as they might seem. On the other side, um, this multiplication is scalar multiplication. And this multiplication here, A with the result, the result is a vector. So this is also scalar multiplication. So you can see that, um, in a way, uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side are very different, are kind of very different operations. That, you know, if you define scalar multiplication in, a, in the wrong way, perhaps something like this might not be true, all right? So we're not just writing down um, things that are completely obviously true. Okay, um, another one having to do with um, scalar multiplication is one time, oh, one times v is equal to v, all right? Um, from our geometric point of view of the addition of vectors, it's obviously true, right? When you do scalar multiplication, you're scaling the vector, and now you're scaling it the vector by just a factor of one, so obviously it doesn't change, okay? All right, um, let's see, one more. So this last one, uh, so this uh, uh, second two over here were, the last two that we just talked about were about scalar multiplication. This last one is about the interaction between scalar multiplication and addition. So again, in math, whenever you have multiple operations that you can do on a mathematical object, you want to know how those operations interact with each other. And that's what this third guy is. So um, A times V plus W is equal to or yeah is equal to a v plus um, a w. So this says that um, if you have uh, if you add two vectors first and then you do scalar multiplication with the number to the result, that's the same as doing scalar multiplication first, scalar multiplication first, and then adding the two vectors. Okay, um, this would be known as the distributive law. Um, in uh, in in grade school math, 
all right? Um, but again, anytime you have multiplication and you have addition, or you have the concepts of multiplication um, and addition, then you want to know that this interaction works the way you expect. Okay, and of course, if we have the distributive law um, up here like this, we can also write that a plus b v is equal to a v plus b v. Okay, so um, on this left-hand side, we're adding first and then doing scalar multiplication. On the right-hand side, we're doing scalar multiplications first and then adding, all right? So again, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, they feel like they're obviously the same, but in fact, you're doing very different, um, you're kind of interacting very differently, all right? Okay, so these are the distributive laws. And any time you have an addition or multiplication, um, pretty much if you've defined them kind of in a reasonable way, the distributive laws should be true, okay? All right, something interesting here. Um, I haven't put a property that says uh, zero times V is equal to uh, zero, uh, because we actually talked about why that should be true in terms of the picture, but um, one thing you could do for fun um, is only from these laws, only from these kind of bullet points that I've, I've drawn out, you can show that just using those, this has to be true no matter what, right? Without having to go to the geometric picture, right? So if I told you I had a concept of addition of vectors, I had a concept of scalar multiplication, um, and I don't tell you how to do those two things, I just tell you that with those two concepts, all these bullet points are true, then for sure, zero uh, times V should be equal to the zero vector. Even again, without me telling you how to do the scalar multiplication or addition. So uh, maybe a fun exercise for you to play around with. Okay. Um, so again, all of these are what we expect. But again, they're maybe a little more complicated than they might appear um, on the surface. Okay, uh, let's now talk about um, arithmetic, so algebra again, but from an arithmetic point of view. All right, so. Uh, Adding and scalar multiplication of vectors um, is perfectly fine when we did it with the pictures, but in math, right, you can't always just rely on pictures. Um, in real life, you can't just rely on pictures, especially since, you know, when you draw pictures, things are not 100% accurate. Uh, so we need a way to add and scalar multiply so that things can be done very precisely, um, arithmetically. All right, so um, let's do that. How do we do that? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some sort of standardization. So any vector that I have, what I can do is, like we said, we can move a vector however we like, right? As long as we don't change the direction and the um, uh, length. I'm gonna take, whenever I have a vector, I can take it so that its tail, so here's, again, uh, for now, in this section, we're talking about vectors in the plane. Uh, so far, all these, uh, all these concepts, it all works um, in space. Um, I'm gonna emphasize that again in 13.2, but so far, we're just in the plane. So X and Y, right? If I have a vector like this, um, I'm in the plane in R2, um, I can move this uh, tail to the origin, all right? And if I do that, then I have some sort of standardization of how to represent a vector, right? If I say, whenever I wanna work with a vector, I move its tail to the origin, right? Then what's gonna happen is that um, with the location of the head, that point right there, completely tells me which vector I'm working with, right? So if I take this vector up here, I move it so its tail is at the origin, and it ends up so that, um, these coordinates here are, let's say, um, 3, comma, uh, 2, then, 
So this point right here is 3, 2. Then that 3 and 2 completely determine my vector. All right? No other vector will, when it's moved here, will have its head at 3, 2. All right? Every other vector that's different from my original vector, that's not equal to it, will, when I move it to the origin, its tail to the origin, will have a head at a different location. Okay, so this um, gives me a, a way to standardize uh, my, my kind of representation of vectors so that I can actually do algebra because this 3 and, three and 2, this 3 comma 2, completely represents my vector. And so I can uh, kind of think about ad arithmetic or, or scalar multiplication and, and uh, addition in terms of these two numbers. Okay, so let's start um, by notation. So any vector, I can move its tail to the origin. I can look at where its head is. If it's at 3, 2, then what I'm going to write, so let me call this V, my notation is going to be V equals sharp brackets 3, 2. Okay, the sharp brackets indicate that I'm working with a vector. All right, so we're going to be, again, very, very disciplined with this. Um, whenever I use sharp brackets, that means I'm talking about a vector. Whenever I use parentheses brackets, um, that means I'm talking about just a point, all right? So here, the 3, 2, the point. Here, 3, 2, the vector, all right? Okay, so again, in this class, we have a lot of concepts mixed around that look similar, that can do similar things. You know, we can add vectors. We can add numbers. Um, a lot of things kind of... There's a lot of things floating around, so it's, if, you're, if you don't get your notation straight, it's really easy to confuse yourself, um, especially uh, you know, in high-stress situations like an exam. So try to be very, very disciplined in terms of your notation. Okay, so that's my notation. Um, this is the vector 3, 2. Now, um, let's think about uh, addition. So... If I, if I want to add two vectors, um, let's say w is equal to 1, comma, uh, 4, right? What is v plus w? Oops. What is v plus w? So I want to be able to do this computation without having to draw a picture, right? just by, I want to do it just by looking at these four numbers, 3, 2, 1, and 4, all right? Well, the answer, super simple. V plus W is equal to, let me write 3, 2 plus 1, 4, right? Actually, no math has happened from, from this left-hand side to the right-hand side. The math happens in this next step. The way you do it is 3 plus 1, 2 plus 4. So you just add the, um, the components individually. All right, the x component, 3 and 1, add them together. The y components, 2 and 4, add them together. You get 4, 6. And that's it. That's the addition of vectors, at least the uh, kind of arithmetic um, point of view. So luckily for us, super, super simple. All right. Um, does this kind of um, fit with our concept of addition, um, our geometric concept of addition? Yes, because if I do it, um, if I think about this geometrically, uh, I have v, which is 3, 2, like this, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, right? This is my v. Um, what is w? w is a vector that um, if I start at the origin, I move one step to the right and then four steps up, okay? Now, if I move it to the head of v, right, in order to, to do the... Uh, or geometric um, addition, it's still going to be a vector that's one step to the right, four steps up, right? So um, right, if uh, w looks like this here, one step to the right, four steps up, if I move it anywhere else, it's still going to be, if it's to be the same vector, it's still going to have to be one step to the right, four steps, sorry, four steps, four steps up, okay? So, um, how do I do my addition? Uh, I draw W after V, so W is one step to the right, four steps up, one, two, three, four. So it's gonna end up right there. And where is that? Well, altogether, 
let me get rid of this, it looks weird. Um, All together, we're moving one, two, three, um, four steps to the right, right, which is three plus one, which is that four right there. And then how far did we go up all together? Uh, we did the two steps of V and then the four steps of W, getting six. Okay, so of course, the two are two points of views for uh, addition fit together perfectly. Okay. All right. Um, so super important, easy, right? Especially when you compare it to the geometric point of view, because again, um, drawing pictures, having to rely on pictures is really dangerous. And uh, it's kind of hard sometimes because you don't always have access to pictures. But luckily for us, um, if we do this kind of standardization of represent, uh, representing vectors, um, addition is super, super easy. Okay, um, scalar multiplication. So luckily for us, this is also super easy. Um, if I have a vector, and let's say it's, um, what was my example up here? Three comma two. Right, this is um, three comma two. So how do I scale and multiply? What's two times this? Uh, let me write kind of more completely. Two times V is equal to two times three comma two. Again, no math has gone on. This, uh, this first uh, equality here is purely notation, uh, but the math uh, is right here. It's gonna be two times three, which is six, and then two times two, which is four, all right? So scalar multiplication, you just multiply the uh, scalar into the first term, multiply the scalar into the second term, okay? All right, um, again, this fits perfectly with our concept of, um, our geometric concept of uh, scalar multiplication. Uh, one, two, three, one, two. If I scale this to be two times the length, right, what am I doing? Uh, with the first V, I'm going three steps to the right. And then with the second V, I'm going another three steps to the right, right, because it's twice as long. So another three steps to the right. And then um, with the original V, I'm going two steps up. Now I'm going another V, right, two times V. I'm going another two steps up. So I'm gonna end up at six comma four, okay? So you can reason this out um, for one half times V. You can reason this out for negative V. You can reason the same thing out for negative three V. Everything works perfectly, okay? So minus one half V would be equal to um, minus one half of three comma two. That would be uh, minus three over two comma, uh, sorry, minus one. Okay, so again, super easy. And it's really important that it's easy because, you know, we want to be able to do computations. All right, um, let's see. Let me do a, a, another bit of notation. So now that we have this concept of addition, we can, we can introduce another notation. So uh, V is equal to, three comma two, that's one kind of notation we, uh, we often use. And again, this, this is actually the book's notation. Um, it's a very common notation, the sharp brackets. Uh, but there's another way that we, you often see um, vectors written, and this is especially used uh, in physics classes. So another way to write this is, um, let me draw the plane here. Uh, there's two special vectors. Whenever I have a picture of, of the plane, there's two special, very special vectors. One is a vector in this direction, in the x direction, positive x direction, with length one, all right? Another ve uh, very kind of special vector is a vector in the positive y direction of length one, okay? These are, these are um, uh, so special that we give them names. Uh, the name for the uh, one in the x direction, we call it i. The name for the one in the y direction, we call it J. Um, the way we normally write this is I with an arrow on top. Uh, you don't write the dot on top of the I, and same with the J, okay? All right, so these are special because um, 
when you have vectors in a plane, for example, 3, 2, you can always represent it in terms of i and j, right? Uh, let me first write i and j in terms of our new notation. i is equal to 1, 0, right? One step to the right, 0 steps up. And j is um, equal to 0, 1, all right? So now any vector I have, for example, my 3, 2, I can write it as, uh, let me do it kind of really carefully and, and anally in a way. This is 3 times 1, 0 plus 2 times 0, 1, right? Because this is 3, 0. The second one is, is uh, 0, 2. When I add them together, I get 3, 2. Okay? But this is 3i, right? The first, the, second, uh, the first vector here is i, plus 2j. Okay? So every vector we can write, instead of using the sharp bracket notation, we can write in terms of the i and j notation. Okay, and super the, the conversion is super easy. This three is the same as that three. That two is the same as that two. Purely notation, um, but very very commonly both these uh, types of notations are very commonly used. All right, when we get to vectors in space, uh, we'll have to add another term right there. Okay. Um, Couple more things, and then we'll talk about uh, something really, uh, really important, and that'll end uh, thirteen point one. Okay. Uh, sometimes we'll let's say we're in the plane again. Sometimes we'll have two points. Uh, let's say one comma two, and uh, three comma four, and we'll want to talk about the vector that goes from one of these points to to the other. So this vector right there. What is that vector? Super simple. Uh, let me call this um, uh, point P. Let me call that point Q. Um, what is that vector? Uh, in terms of notation, we're going to write PQ with an arrow like that, right? P going to Q. Um, and it's going to be, if you think about it, right, how do we get from P to Q? We move um, two steps to the right, and then we move two steps up. Okay? So it's going to be 2 comma 2. And how do I calculate that arithmetically? The 2 comma 2 is 3 minus 1 comma 4 minus 2. Okay. So this allows me to kind of create vectors out of, um, out of two points. All right. Um, what is QP? That's going to be the vector in the opposite direction. So that's going to be, let me do this kind of just... Um, uh, Arithmetically here, this is going to be 1 minus 3, comma, 2 minus 4. So this is going to be minus 2, comma, minus 2, which is, as we expect, um, negative of 2, comma, 2, the vector in the opposite direction. Right? So QP would be that guy right there. Oops. What's going on? Okay. Um, so we'll see that here and there. Uh, mostly this is just notational. PQ, what does PQ mean? Okay, um, length. So we talked about length um, in terms of the picture, uh, and there's nothing really to say there because it's just literally the length, right? Um, something that you look at in a picture, or you take, maybe you take out a ruler and you measure the length. But what, if, what happens if I have a vector V equals uh, 3, 2? What is its length? All right. Um, well, turns out, super easy to compute. X, Y. Oops, shouldn't have done that. 1, 2, 3. 3, comma, 2. All right, here's my V. What is its length? No problem. Pythagorean theorem, All right? Um, when I put the tail here, I'm supposed to be at 3, comma, 2. So that means this length here, 1, 2, 3, and then this height here, 1, 2. I've got a right triangle, and so length of V, uh, length is, um, and let me introduce the notation. Absolute value is my notation by the Pythagorean theorem, 3 squared plus 2 squared, square root. So... Um, square root, in this example, 9 plus uh, 4, which is root 13. 
Okay. So the length of a vector is uh, easy to compute when you have it in kind of this standardized form. Just, just purely uh, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, uh, by the way, this notation, absolute value, makes perfect sense because um, the length is always something that's bigger than or equal to zero. And we always expect, right, absolute values um, are always things are always things that are um, bigger than or equal to zero. In fact, uh, maybe this gives you a new perspective on the idea of length because uh, on the idea of the absolute value because normally um, just on the regular number line, right? Um, what's the absolute value of minus two? Well, one way you can think about it is absolute value of minus two is the distance from two to zero, uh, from minus two to zero. The absolute value is actually a good way to think of it is the distance from your location to zero. So this is equal to two, right? So this is why if you've, um, in the past, when you looked at complex numbers um, you, and you represented complex numbers in the plane, right? Uh, the definition of the length of a complex number is uh, the distance to, to the origin. So that kind of extends this idea over here. Okay, so again, that was just a small aside. All right, um, now that we know how to calculate the length of a vector, uh, we can talk about something really important that we'll see uh, multiple times throughout this uh, semester, and that's the concept of a unit vector. So this is very, the idea is very simple. Um, this is a vector of length one, all right? That's it. So the most uh, simple examples is I is a unit vector, J is a unit vector. But of course, there's many, many unit vectors. Um, any vector, if I draw a circle here of radius one, any vector whose head lives on that circle is a unit vector, okay? All right, um, unit vectors are kind of important because uh, we said a vector is comprised of a length and a direction. So sometimes we wanna break those two uh, features apart. Some, you know, where we want to separate the idea of the length of a vector with the uh, direction of a vector. And what a unit vector does is it kind of only encapsulates the idea of a direction, right? Um, because all unit vectors have length one, so the length is not that interesting. And so only the direction is interesting, okay? So they, so again, the, the idea is that unit vectors encapsulate the, the concept of direction, all right? Okay, um, any vector can be written as um, the product of its length um, and a unit vector. All right, so any vector v, I can write it as a number, and that number is the length of v, times another vector. Oops, uh, times a vector. Let me, let me do that. Okay. How do I do that? Super simple, actually. Um, if we take the uh, kind of picture point of view, if I have a vector v like this, right, how do I write it as a length times a unit vector? Well, um, to get a unit vector, I just take this vector and then I shrink it down until it's length one. How do I shrink it down until it's length one? I divide by its length, right? So I multiply one over v, one over the length of v times v, right? Again, this is this is uh, um, easy to uh, kind of grasp when you when we're looking at the the geometric aspect of a vector, right? If I shrink it by a factor of its own length, then it's going to end up the result is going to be something of length um, of length one. All right, so this guy is a unit vector. Okay, now if I want to represent V again, the full V, um, I just multiply back its length. 
So v is equal to the length of v times the unit vector 1 over v times v. All right? And this is my break this is the breakdown that we've talked about. The length of v unit vector. Okay? Um, it seems really silly, especially since you can kind of literally see that two of these quantities cancel. But again, we very frequently want to look at each of these two individual parts separately um, and use them for perhaps for different purposes. So this, this breakdown, while it looks simple, is kind of actually very powerful. So let me actually write this down. This is my length. This is my unit vector. By the way, um, Frequently, I'm, I am going to use, like I said, division doesn't exist, but obviously I'm going to use the abbreviation uh, like this very frequently. Okay. Um, let me do, uh, so I guess I should do a, a numerical example of this, right? 3 comma 2. How do I do this breakdown? Well, the length of V is square root 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is square root 13. We've already computed that. So my breakdown is v is equal to square root 13 times v over square root 13. And if I wanted to write this out you know, completely, this would be 13, 3 over root 13, uh, 2 over root 13. OK. So again, this is unit. And this guy's length. All right. Uh, by the way, um, just uh, as a, the last thing in this section, just a small mention. Um, if I take c times v and I take its length, that's actually just equal to the length of c, uh, the absolute value of c times the length of v. All right. As we as we expect in a way. And again, you can reason this out either from our geometric um, definition uh, of vectors or from our kind of arithmetic um, computational. Uh, point of view of vectors. Um, just a small note, but um, we'll be using it uh, here and there uh, quite often. So actually, let me just use it very kind of in a, in a simple but silly way, right? What's the length of v? Um, sorry, let me, uh, v is equal to length of v times v over length of v, right? If I take um, the length on both sides, what do I get? I get this guy here, right? And so I can pull these um, constants out. Um, ah, that, this example is kind of silly, but of course you get what, what you expect. Okay, I, I kind of regret giving that example. Um, it, was, it was really, really silly. Okay, anyway, um, that's it. Um, for 13.1, um, let's move on to 13.2. So 13.2 is actually kind of short. So that's why I'm, I'm putting these two, uh, these two lectures together. Again, 13.3, uh, um, probably I'll do it as its own lecture. And then 13.4 and 5, I'll probably combine. OK, um, space. Or again, I'll frequently use the uh, um, terminology R3. OK, so the first thing about space is that now we've added a third dimension. Um, previously, we had the plane, and we had x and y to describe our coordinates. Now we have the z-coordinate. Um, we want to talk about, uh, well, technically, this, this section is about vectors in space. But really, everything that we just talked about applies. Um, everything works exactly the same. Uh, how do you add two vectors in space? You, you do exactly the same thing, right? You can put them so that the tails are in the same place. You can draw a parallelogram, and then that's my sum, all right? It's all exactly the same because whenever you have two vectors, right, um, you, you do create a parallelogram between them. And then everything just reduces down to the, uh, the two-dimensional um, situation, okay? And in terms of... Uh, the arithmetic of, um, of vectors, same thing, right? You can uh, move the tail 
to the origin, and then you would have something like 3, 2, minus 1. That would represent a vector in space uh, whose, when you put its tail at the origin, its head is at 3, 2, minus 1. So the only difference is that we're adding a, a third dimension. Um, how do you add? Exactly the same way. If I want to add this to 2, 1, 5, um, this is going to be 3 plus first entry plus first entry, 5. Second entry plus second entry, 3. Third entry plus third entry, 4. Nothing exciting. Um, everything works pretty much exactly the same. Um, scalar multiplication, same thing. 1, 2, 4 is equal to 3, 6, 12. Okay. Uh, nothing exciting there either. Um, we'll talk about length in one second. Uh, that one is a, a little bit more um, more interesting. But the basic ideas is all the same. Uh, oh, I guess uh, there was the one more concept. Um, before we had i, j, k, but now if I go 5, 3, 4, I can write it as 5i plus 3j plus 4k. And what is k? K is the um, direction that's vertical in the z direction, positive z direction of length 1. All right? Speaking of that, let me talk about visualization. So um, drawing pictures is going to be a big part of our class, particularly when we get to um, integration. We're going to need to draw pictures in integration, and we're going to need to frequently draw pictures in space. So we definitely want to get comfortable with that as soon as possible. All right, so here's how we typically draw space uh, with our axes, x, y, and z axes. Um, it looks kind of weird because normally we draw things in a plane like this, x and y. But um, the idea behind this way of drawing, drawing space is that uh, frequently we work with, uh, frequently, let's say in the plane, we work in the first quadrant, right? <clears throat> so we often draw the first quadrant prominently. Uh, well, what is the first quadrant? It's the place where x is positive and y is positive. Okay. Well, in space, same idea. We frequently work in situations where x, y, and z are positive. So the first, there's in space, there's going to be instead of four, um, instead of four quadrants, um, there's eight octants um, because um, <clears throat> the x, y, and z are. You can break up space into eight pieces. So where x, y, and z are all positive is the first octant. We don't usually typically um, name the other ones. Um, and that one, when we draw our uh, space um, in the way that we draw it, the first octant is facing us prominently. All right, so that's the reason why it's, it, it feels kind of weird, but um, this is the reason why we draw it like this. Okay, um, let's, let's do some basic, very, very basic pictures. So how do I represent a point like, um, let me do this in a different color. Uh, let me represent a point, 1, 2, 3. All right. How do I draw that in, in, um, in space? So here's the, here's the picture. 1, 2, 3. Right? Here's one way to do it. Now, the problem is this is terrible because this is trying to represent something three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface, right? a piece of paper or the screen or whatever. So if I just draw a dot like this, it's pretty much impossible to tell the location of this dot um, in space. So when we actually draw pictures in space, it's very, very um, useful to, let me erase this. It's very useful to um, first draw the shadow of the object uh, on the XY, XY plane. So what I mean is imagine the sun shining from the Z axis very far away up above from the Z axis and you have a point, what is its shadow? Um, its shadow is going to be, if my point is 1, 2, 3, the shadow is going to be 1, 2, 0. So let me draw that first. Um, this is actually going to be super useful. This idea of the shadow is going to be super useful when we do integration, by the way. So let me draw 1, 2, 0. So 1 is uh, moving one step in the x direction, right there. 2 is moving two steps in the y direction, right there. So just 1, 2 in the xy plane is going to be that guy right there. All right. So this is 1, 2 um, in the xy plane in this picture, or more precisely, 1, 2, 0 in space. Okay. So um, you want to probably 
um, draw dotted lines like this, at least initially when you do these kind of pictures so that you can see what's going on. Okay, um, so it's all about, you know, drawing with perspective in a way. Okay, now, um, where's my actual point, 1, 2, 3? Well, I need to move three steps up. So 1, 2, 3. Um, I go up three steps. And again, in terms of perspective, it's going to be, so uh, let's see. So one thing I can, an additional thing I can draw to help me out is this diagonal line right there. So um, in terms of perspective, I would have this same diagonal line um, parallel to the one below. Where's my point? My point lives right there. All right. Okay, uh, let me, oops, oh no. Let me do it so that I just have only enough that I need. Okay, so this is my point. Um, this is the procedure. This is a very nice procedure to do the drawing. And, uh, you know, when you are drawing stuff like this, um, feel free to leave the dotted point lines in or whatever uh, so that you can, so that someone who's looking at your picture knows um, where that point is, can tell where that point is just by looking at the picture, as opposed to just that, right? Which could be literally anywhere. Not literally, almost anywhere. Okay, so that's one comma two comma three. All right. Um, one good exercise right now, right? Try to draw uh, two comma four comma seven. Try to draw minus one comma two comma five, and so on. Right. Uh, by the way, if you do want to do negative numbers, right? Let's say minus one comma two comma. What did I just say? Seven. Um, X Y Z. Right? So maybe draw a dotted line like that to represent a negative x-axis. One, uh, one step um, in the negative x-direction, two steps in the positive y-direction. So in terms of the shadow, the shadow of my point is right there. Okay? And then uh, again, I draw, it's very, very useful to draw this line right there. And then I go up seven steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whatever. We don't have to draw by um, to scale here in this class. Um, I draw the same line parallel to the one below. And then my point is directly above, right there. Okay. All right, so draw a few of these, get used to it. We will be doing a lot of drawing in the second half of our class when we do integration. And if your pictures are kind of um, indecipherable, it's going to be really, really hard to do integration. Okay. Um, Vectors. Uh, so how would you draw a vector? Just same, exactly the same idea, right? If you can draw a point, you can draw a vector because uh, if I wanted to draw the vector minus one comma two comma uh, seven, right? I would just take the arrow from the origin to that guy right there, okay? By the way, um, this arrow lives in the plane formed by, um, formed by these two uh, red arrows right there, okay? All right, so try to try to kind of draw with roughly correct perspective. It'll really help you uh, visualize things. Okay, um, let's see. Ah, okay, a couple more kind of drawing things. Um, again, we're we're often not used to to visualizing space or three dimensions. Uh, with this kind of um, axis. So let me draw something like this. So if this is uh, just to just to show you how how the perspective or how, how these uh, pictures work. So if in the XY plane, I, I were to look at a parabola, right? So if I were to think of this maybe at, in space, the Z direction would be pointing out of the screen, okay? But just this parabola, just this curve right here, what would it look like in space, in the spatial picture? Um, so what it would look like is, this is the positive Y direction, and so that's the positive right, y direction, okay? Um, this is the positive x direction. That's the positive x direction. So the picture would look something like, something like that, okay? All right, we'll be doing a lot of pictures like this. Um, again, integration when we do integration in the future. So uh, it's good to to stare at this these kinds of pictures long enough that you get 
um, comfortable with them. Maybe it's useful to draw that dotted line for the negative uh, negative x x axis there. <laughs> Okay, um, one more thing in terms of pictures. Um, or let me, uh, hmm. let me talk about distance. Let me talk about distance. So let's say we had a vector. Let me actually uh, just do, ah, let me do a vector. Let me do a vector here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. How I want to draw this. So maybe something like this. Um, I've been doing this in red. Uh, let me do that kind of dotted lines here. Okay, so uh, let me say this is a vector. Uh, this is x, that's y, that's z. Uh, z. Oh, by the way, um, something I want to say. Um, this one has to be x. This one has to be x. That one has to be y. If you put y here and you put x there, then your your um, your coordinates are going to be backwards. Um, that would be something like drawing the x y plane, like uh, like this, right? X y, um, and you can see it's it's very different from this, right? Um, So make sure make sure your your this one is always x and that one is always y. Okay. All right. Actually, um, what I wanted to say was if you swap the x and the y, it's actually much worse than the one I just erased um, because the z direction would have to point downwards um, if you wanted to make it uh, consistent. Okay. Anyways, let's get back to this. Uh, let me say this is. Um, this vector, let me say this coordinate here is five. This coordinate here looks like maybe two. And let's say this coordinate here is uh, six. All right, so this is the vector um, five comma two comma six. Right there. All right, um, what is its length? Uh, I should give it a name, let's call it V. That was terrible. Okay, let's call it V. So what is its length? How do I calculate this? Um, well, one point of view is that it's just a distance, right, from the origin to five comma two comma six. All right, uh, what is that distance? Well, if you know the distance formula um, for R3, for a space, then you're done, right? But let's, let's say you don't, uh, let's figure it out, okay? Um, Let's see, I said you should draw things kind of with a nice perspective, but this, this looks a little weird. Let me drop this down to there. Maybe, maybe it looks a little better. Okay, um, how, do we calculate, how do we calculate the length, oops. How do we calculate the length, from, the distance from there to there? Well, um, first of all, we can calculate the length of this red, this red vector right there. Or not vector, this red length right there, right? This guy here, um, goes from zero to five comma two, right? In, in terms of just x and y, right? So its length is super um, straightforward because it's just a Pythagorean theorem. We already talked about this, right? We have a length of two there. We have a um, length of five here. So that red guy has length square root five squared plus two squared. Okay. Um, why did I care about? Why do I care about that? Well. Because I actually have a second right triangle in this picture, and that's the right triangle that's up here, with this guy as my um, my right angle, right? Now, if I if I stare at this correctly, um, this right triangle has side right there, the one we just computed its length of, and it has a vertical side right there whose length is six, and then its hypotenuse is the length we want. Okay. So the length of my vector is actually going to be, um, length of v is going to be square root of the first side squared, square root 5 squared plus 2 squared, plus the second side squared, plus the second side is uh, length 6, 6 squared, and then square root. Oops, sorry, I forgot to square that, square root, 
right? Again, just a Pythagorean theorem. Now, if we simplify that, that's 5 squared plus 2 squared plus 6 squared, okay? And if you think about that, that's just the x-coordinate squared, the y-coordinate squared, z-coordinate squared, add them all up, all right? So that's one kind of uh, reasoning for the uh, distance formula or the, the length formula for a vector in space, okay? And you can imagine if we did four dimensions, um, we would just add another term right there. Okay, um, let me write down um, in general, uh, if V is equal to ABC, then its length is square root A squared plus B squared plus C squared, all right? And as a side note, if we had two points in space, x1, x2, x3, and we had, oh, sorry, I, let me not do, um, let me do it like this. Let me do the notation slightly differently. x1, y1, z1, and I had another point, x2, y2, z2. All right, so maybe here's x1, y1, z1. Here's uh, x2, y2, z2, right? Uh, what's the distance between these two points? Um, so you can, uh, just by kind of the picture that we just drew, uh, in terms of the distance from a point to the origin, you can reason out that this guy here is square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. So a natural extension of the distance formula um, in the plane. All right. We'll use this occasionally here, um, here and there. All right. Um, one more thing, one more thing. Uh, and then we'll end this, uh, this lecture. So now that we have the concept of distance, we can talk about um, spheres. So let's look at an equation. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. When we write down an equation like this, what we mean is, um, this is shorthand for, this is uh, shorthand for the collection of all points x comma y comma z where um, such that let me write such that such that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one all right so it's, it's, um, it's a shorthand for actually describing a geometric object. That's one way you can think of it, okay? Um, so this guy describes a geometric object, uh, and that object is, um, consists of all the points that satisfy this equation. Now, what is this in terms of uh, the picture? Well, um, this is going to be, looking at our distance formula, this is going to be all the points whose distance to the origin is equal to um, square root of one, right? Because the distance has a square root, right? So this actually describes all the, let me put a nine here just to make it more interesting. And let me say that again. Okay, so this guy here is the set of all points whose distance squared, right? This left-hand side is distance squared, whose distance squared is equal to nine, right? So it's a set of all points whose distance is three, distance to the origin is three. Right? What are all the things whose distance to the origin is three? Well, that's gonna be a sphere. And how do we draw that? Something like this, perhaps. And then it's probably a good idea to draw the equator just to give us some perspective, some three-dimensional perspective. All right? So this is gonna be a sphere of radius, uh, radius three, about the origin, okay? Um, We'll be looking at equations like this quite a bit uh, when we get to integration, when we get to uh, kind of the more interesting optimization problems. 
All right, so last thing, what happens if I do something like this? x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z plus uh, 4 squared equals 16. What is that? What does um, this, what is this shorthand for? Again, it's shorthand for um, the collection of points, x, y, z, that satisfies this equation, right? So all the x, y, z that satisfy this equation. If I, if I took all the, the x, y, z that satisfy this equation and I plotted them on the plane, on the, uh, in space, what would I get? I would get a sphere again, all right? And uh, this time the sphere would be uh, center, 2 comma 1 comma minus 4, and its radius would be 4. Okay, so um, of course it's pretty much it pretty much works exactly the same way as circles um, worked in uh, in the plane, right? So if I just had x minus two plus y minus one equals sixteen, that would be a circle of radius four, about two comma one. So now it's the same same idea except now we have a z. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's all we needed to talk about for 13.1 um, 13 and 2. So next is 13.3, and that's going to be another video. Take a small break right now. All right. I'm um, going to end the recording.